The pumpkin snatcher is my variation of the popular English snatcher. Through the simple addition of an orange glass bead, the pumpkin snatcher makes an excellent suggestive pattern to consider when trout are foraging on scuds. The palmered hackle reduces the pattern sink rate, making it a favorite choice when trout are hunting over shallow weed beds. So let's tie the pumpkin snatcher. The jaws of my regal, I've got a straight eye scud hook, and I slid on a orange glass bead, kind of a medium pumpkin color, hence the fly's name. And then we're just going to attach our 8 odd MFC tying thread directly behind the glass bead. Get that tied in place. And then cover the hook shank with thread so we have a nice smooth foundation and some traction to tie our materials on. I'm just going to go right back up after covering the shank, right up behind the bead. And then we're going to tie in our ribbing material, which is a length of small UTC gold wire. Actually stab that into the bead if that helps. And then we're going to secure the wire all the way down the hook shank. So the body is an olive dubbing, and in this case we're going to use some of the UV2 Caddis Nymph dubbing in olive. So I've just taken a small pinch of the UV2 dubbing that I'm going to pull from. I'm going to moisten my fingers slightly because I don't use dubbing wax. And we're just going to take a little amount and basically turn the thread fuzzy. Don't use too much dubbing. You can always add more dubbing. But taking it off is a problem. And if you get too much on there or accidentally spin the noodle parallel to the thread, when you go to wind this forward, the thread goes one way, the dubbing goes another, and it becomes pretty frustrating. So we're just going to coat the thread that way. And you notice I've left a little bit of bare thread. This helps me aim my dubbing noodle right where I secured that wire in. I can make sure I cover up my thread. And then we're just going to go forward. Nice tight turns. Right up. Right up to the rear of the bead, just like that. A little gap's fine. Okay. And now for the hackle on here, this is just a, a grizzly um, saddle, sorry, a grizzly neck dyed olive. It's not the greatest saddle in the world. It's sized for about a number 10. So an Indian neck or, um, you know, a low grade generic is fine. This is a wet fly, so it doesn't have to support the fly on the water or anything like that. We're just going to stroke down to expose some fibers right at this point. We're going to, so we don't want to tie in any of that soft flu. I'm going to come in with my scissors Trim that a little bit of a stem. I'm going to tuck that in right and right behind the bead. You can see how I've positioned that. So the shiny side or the convex side of the feather is facing forward, so this fly will naturally sweep back. All right, for this next step, you're going to want to have your hackle pliers on hand. I love my old English style hackle pliers. I'm going to use my hand first to position the feather. So I want it to wind straight back. So I'm going to put a couple of wraps, one complete wrap at least, right behind the bead and then start palmering or winding this hackle back in open turns right back. Careful of that hook point. But one turn from falling off the back of the fly and then I'm going to come in at this point, I'm going to attach my hackle pliers to the tip section, get a good purchase, and they're simply going to hang there as a weight to hold this hackle in place. And now I'm going to wind the hackle, sorry, wind the rib forward, weaving it or zigzagging it through the fibers to secure this in place. And this makes for a really durable way to attach hackles. If you're tying woolly buggers, this is the way to do it, because for a fish to chew apart the hackle, it has to break apart all of these different segments of wire before that feather will unwind. So you'll have a nice durable 
woolly bugger or any palmer body fly that can now withstand a severe mauling. And we're just going to pull and twist until that wire breaks. And then we're just going to come in and trim this. And then we can just going to add a little bit of attraction, a little bit of. So, to do that, I'm going to take on each side, I'm going to take and put a little bit of crystal, sorry, not crystal flash, flashaboo. So, I'm just going to lay this onto the barrel of the bobbin. Fold it around the bobbin and secure it right along the side of the hook. A couple of wraps to hold that in place. Trim away, that's not going to be our final trim. Repeat this process again. Bring it in tight so we can see. Lay that flashaboo onto the barrel of bobbin. Use your forefinger to hold it in place. Grab both ends, pull them together. Transfer them onto the tying thread, and now I'm just going to rotate the thread around. And I'll rotate the fly a little bit so you can see. And secure those two strands along the, the far side. I'm just going to trim those away. And then we're just going to finish the fly, and then we'll do the final trim on our little attractor cheeks, if you will. Take our tying thread, a light coating. Brushable super glue, careful not to get any in the hackle fibers. If you want, hold everything back. Fill that up. Whip finish. Trim, and the tying portion of your pumpkin snatcher is done. What we're going to do is a final trim to these cheeks. So I moisten them a little bit to keep them together. I'm going to trim them about three quarters of the way along the side of the fly. And these are just a, they're optional of course, just a little bit of an attractive flash to the fly, a little bit of come get me. So there you go, the finished pumpkin snatcher. It's a variation of the English snatcher with a orange bead. It's a scud-like fly. That's when I like to use this fly. The Palmered hackle helps keep this fly up in the water a little bit, off the weed bottom um, where scuds like to live. I like to fish this on a floating line, midge tip, or a hover with a slow strip or hand twist. It's suggestive of a scud and it's worked very well for me at times. So consider adding that to your Stillwater fly box. For more information on fly fishing and Stillwater fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you'll find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online Stillwater Fly Fishing Shop. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. In addition, you can also follow me through my social media channels, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and please take the time to watch my other tying videos as well.